Hello, I'm Mike. This is my video, my first of a series of videos that I'm going to make chronicling my overland camp trailer build. Um, I'm starting off with the suspension on this one. I watch a lot of videos, different people um, with different suspensions. Um, I've seen a video where they actually had underneath the trailer showing how the suspensions work uh, between independent suspension and solid axle and I really like the way that the independent works so that's what I'm going to be putting together um, I'm starting off with these axle stubs these are the same ones that are used for 5,000 to 7,000 pound axles um, I like them because they utilize the larger brakes I have a old old brake here and as you can see these brakes are really beefy um, they're two inches wide they're 12 inch and they use the five hole mounting pattern another thing about these is they cut the hubs that come for them are six lug and eight lug the six lug is the same pattern as most of the Japanese, um, I think Nissan does have a smaller six lug pattern on the newer trucks, but your older Toyotas and, and Nissans and Mazdas and so forth, they all use six lugs. Also Chevy uses the same pattern. So I'm going to be towing it behind a four runner, an old four wheel drive four runner. So it's got the six lugs. So I have an extra set of wheels that I'm going to use for it and that way if I have a flat all my spares will fit either the, the trailer or my forerunner so that's that's the reason why I chose that setup um, you can go with a little bit smaller stub because your trailer your trailer probably won't be that heavy and then you can choose from several different five lug and four lug patterns for those ones um, so this was scrap uh, DOM tubing as you can see there's no seam in it and this stub will fit right in there it's pretty tight so once it's in there I'll be able to weld around here but that's going to be the last thing because I want to make sure that my flanges are clocked correctly so this tube is going to get welded to this flat plate and I'm going to weld it on the bottom side um, on the bottom so so it's down low like this so I'm going to put a bead across the top here I'm going to tack it first on both sides flip it over run a long tack on the bottom side then I'm going to put a bead on top and then I'm going to fill that seam pretty much on the bottom side so that's going to be where my spring will sit so these springs came off of the strut of a Honda CRV um, the CRB I think has about a 2,000 pound front end weight and around 1,500 rear end uh, is how much about how much they weigh it might weigh a little bit less than that um, but they are pretty heavy so the springs the springs should do pretty good on this trailer so this tube's going to be fit it so it will slide up in there better and it will be welded perpendicular with the round tube so and after I get that done I'm going to guess it from here to here just to give it a little extra strength so some some of uh, some of the trailers they have this arm fairly short and one guy he really didn't like that because it creates a more of a steep angle with your spring setup so 
mine is 24 inches long on this one now on the second side now this is going to be an a a style an a arm style so that's going to sit at an angle like that i don't have this one cut to length yet um, because it will be a little bit longer so i'm going to set it at an angle like that i will notch it on this side and then bring this so that just the tip of it will be parallel so i'm going to bring it in and then weld the the seam where it was notched now another thing about this type of tubing this is a dom this this is has a welded seam so you got to think about where you want to have that seam so for that one there i will probably place the seam right there that way I'll have the strength on the back side where, where the steel still is and the weld will hold it. On this one here, I'm going to place the seam downward. Now, if, if you live in cold, cold climate and this tube fills up with water and freezes, it can split that seam. So, you don't want to have your lower end solid. You want to leave some sort of a weep hole. You can drill a weep hole or, you know, just like maybe not weld it completely so that it has a, a spot for water to get out. This end, I'm going to use, um, they make a little sleeve that that has a bushing in it and it's made for uh, custom suspension builds you can buy them on ebay they're like between 25 and 30 bucks a piece so i'm going to get four of those and use them up here for for my pivot uh, the ones i'm getting are greasable so i'll be able to keep the the bushing grease so it'll last longer um, as far as these they have two different styles this this one doesn't have any grease fitting so there's another style that has a hole drilled and a grease fitting and the hole comes all the way back here to the back bearing to allow you to to grease so if if you don't want to pull these apart to repack the bearings once a year you can buy the ones with the grease fitting and just every every once in a while give it a couple pumps of grease in there to put fresh grease in the bearing um, it's still always a good idea to repack your bearings yearly but it's not as vital if you have the the grease fitting in it this set of um, axle stubs i got these on ebay they're actually really well made so the this is a solid piece that was machined down to accept the bearings and the seal this flange has been welded on there and it appears like it was welded using a jig and probably some sort of a, a machine that did the weld so it's a pretty clean weld and an even weld this pair of stub axles was a hundred and I think it was about 115 bucks. The ones with the grease fittings are more like around 150. Um, so what I'm actually building this on is this was going to be a flatbed for a truck that I have. Um, the It was made mainly out of scrap still, uh, except for those long stringers going down. So that's why it has these funny brackets on it. Um, so this, I'm actually scrapping the flatbed idea for the pickup. And this will be my camper frame. Um, I'm going to modify this top a little bit. Um, that will probably be the front end and that the back end. I will put a receiver hitch on the back end. And another thing that I'm going to do is on the tongue, 
I'm going to put a receiver for the tongue so that I can use a different type of tongue. I'm going to use a, a two inch ball for normal towing, but then I'm going to also be able to use a pendle hook. And the pendle hook has better, better pivot, better articulation. We don't get too wild with where we go, but we do go through some washes and stuff sometimes. So I want to be sure that it's going to pivot just fine through that. So hopefully you enjoy my build. This will be the first video. There will be more after I get more of it done. I'm not going to actually show you um, me working on it because that just gets too tedious. So I'll go through a lot of the steps that I took in, in building this trailer. Have a good day.